Yeah. Hello, welcome to the uh, package manager special interest group weekly sync for Tuesday, 11th of June. I'm on the brain, I will be your host in the game of what we did last week, what we've got on, what we're going to do next. Um, so, can I get a volunteer uh, note taken? Yeah, yeah, Hello, Zaya. Thanks, Zaya. I'll attempt to make notes. Okay. Um, so, the first. I want to have intros really fast just so that we all know each other okay. before we jump into going through the notes. Uh, sure. Uh, I'm making right. Uh, Charles Cordev, um, working on the package manager special interest group. That's me. Andrew. Andrew. Sorry. Uh, researching package managers um, and experimenting with lots of different things. I'm Molly. Um, I'm in the IPFS project working group. Um, do lots of project project leadership stuff and also thinking about roadmaps and direction and how we bring all of the great learnings from package managers to all the other working groups so we can solve all their problems. Um, I'm Jessica. I do many of the things that Molly described as well, but um, with a focus on user experience. And um, yeah, that'll do for now. Bernard, do you want to introduce yourself? So, uh, hi, uh, I'm Bernard. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Uh, I am working, or I'm the one running the repositories for OpenSUSE. The experimental ones, and they have cumulative size of four terabytes now. Uh, and I'm gaining some real-world uh, experience with uh, what the problems are, and some are resource leaks and uh, missing propagation of announcements, all these things. And IPMS is not working as I would like it. So that's uh, things I see, but yeah, long term, I think things need more integration. Cool. Yeah, if, I think if you want to add yourself along here, we can spend some time also hearing about your direct, direct feedback and ideas about what could be better. Um, I think that'd be awesome. Yeah, I kind of think we should skip through the updates and go and talk about that kind of stuff in more detail. What do you think? Updates are basically yeah, can, IPFS cap. <laughs> and then we can lightning fast do them or we can just swap the order of things and talk, talk through stuff with Bernard before we jump into Agenda. Jessica, get a hand. I only, I only have one open item um, for the three of you, and that is um, before I go and print out 10,000 um, sheets of paper reflecting what I posted in Slack at about 2 in the morning. Um, if I, I can proceed with going and printing out individual ones of those just for uh, disaster proofing for our, um, for our deep dive session, um, but we'll just need to all get together in person and pull out the ones that we actually want to, to pick apart. I think that's probably the best thing seeing as how I'm getting on a plane tomorrow. Does that all make sense, everybody? Do you have the hack bad? If you just stick it in chat, maybe we can collaboratively um, like strike a couple out because yeah. I think there are a number in there where it's like, yeah. make everyone happy yeah. forever. And it's like, well, right. that's probably um, not like our core value add, even though we wish it were, is yeah. to like, yeah. Andrew just Thank pasted you. it in. Um, if, if maybe like in the next, because I, right. I need so to go AI for all of us is to like, yeah. ideally cut down the list. Let's cut down. Yeah. There's there's a list problems of problems and potential and benefits to the set that we think are going to be most interesting to talk through during the deep dive. Yeah. If we could cut that down to we'll like, to uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, oh, you Andrew, hear me? all right. It might, sorry, Molly. I think I'm just going robotic on just you. Um, all right. If we could cut down that giant list of Andrew's that Andrew linked to to like let's say twenty, which is still probably a little optimistic, but then we can dot vote on those twenty and open those up for discussions. Is that that cool with everybody? I think maybe Molly still can't hear me. I could hear Molly at the time. Uh, huh. But uh, she couldn't hear you, maybe? And now she's can't hear. 
Can you raise your hand if you can hear me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna make this super fast. I just derailed this whole thing. Sorry about that. If we could cut the, if we could cut the combined list of both problems and benefits down to about 20, that's still probably a lot functionally to dot vote on, but I think we'll end up with, you know, if we start with 20, we can knock it down in person and see how we go. I just need to go to the service bureau this afternoon to print out that and some other camp stuff. So if, if y'all could look through it in like the next hour or two, that would be superb. Thank you. Anyone else have, have blockers or asks or anything like that? No blockers. Uh, I have done, I was up late last night hacking on IPFS NPM republish. It is orders of magnitude faster. It now works offline uh, and it has the support for essentially updating. I mean, you're always creating a new thing on IPFS, but updating an existing micro registry that you've published to IPFS. So you can uh, keep iterating on it and adding each set of dependencies for each version of a thing, or you can basically build your own mini registry of the stuff that you care about by just repeatedly running it and passing the CID that you get each time. There's no interface for that yet, but I thought that might be a, an interesting one to create, to basically go like, well, list every package I've got installed and jam them all into a registry uh, that has every possible dependency that you could need for any one of those versions of the thing. Uh, and you could do that all offline because it utilizes the cache of everything you've already installed on NPM, which is really cool. Um, and that, I think, is as far as I'll get before actually like putting the lightning talk together. But it's kind of cool to be able to turn your Wi-Fi off and say publish and then install uh, in, and it works across. The only thing that doesn't work right now is Git dependencies, um, which is annoying because there are JS IPFS libraries that have Git dependencies. I've got a plan to make it mostly work, but it won't work 100% offline. Um, and the other plan is to tell the JS IPFS people to remove all of their Git dependencies, uh, which will kind of work around it in the opposite way. Um, but I won't do a demo of anything now. I'll, I'll just uh, try and get the lightning talk video ready. Um, but yeah, just. Sorry, I forgot to ask one other question related to our deep dive. Um, Andrew and Alex, are you two still okay on collaborating on a here's where we are right now level setting presentation at the beginning of that deep dive, which I think Either you could do it via the magic of video if you wanted to capture yourself, Andrew, or if Alex, if you wouldn't mind giving the introduction and then you know, staying in the deep dive as much as you see fit. That's the one piece that's missing that I, I can't help with. So I'm gonna make sure we're still cool on that. That possibly works nicely with the stuff I'm doing for the team week presentation. Yeah. Maybe we could just take the chunk of the problem section of that um, and we use it. I think, yeah, I think that's probably going to get us like 85% of the way there. That may be something that, I mean, if you want, if you feel comfortable sort of punting on that to have a side discussion um, at team week, you know, whatever, whatever you all feel comfortable with, I just want to make sure it doesn't fall off the radar. That's all. Yeah. Just keep reminding us. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Will do. All right. Everybody has their, their babies and or fur babies. So I'm, I'm, I know. Where's the kitties? <laughs> there is a cat here somewhere, but she's very fat and I can't find her. Oh well. Um, cool. That sounds awesome. Thank you for reminding folks, Jessica. Alex, did you have stuff? Um, I'm not blocked on anything. Just been um yeah, working on uh you know getting the uh NPM registry mirror running on the Raspberry Pi so that we can use IPFS NPM uh, camp. Um, it's broadcasting its availability by MDNS. And now like I've got a like a pre-release of NPM IPFS that will look for that MDNS name on the local network and it's gonna be well good. Um, you were gonna uh, yeah Molly, you were gonna give me a list of things to also make available over IPFS on the network. 
Um, if you You're right. Send over. I, and then you've got it. I have not gotten that list from from the electives yet. Thinking that you know maybe they have pre work that they want pre installed. Um, hopefully that stuff. I can send everyone an email and check to see if that those things have solidified. But I'm also you know as a one of the cat herders for for content being created for camp. Um, they're literally going to be making me install stuff when we practice running through their workshops. And so from there, I will definitely get a list of those things. Um, but I'll, I'll try and see if I can get you anything that exists. ASAP, what's your, what's your deadline? Just so I know. Um, well, you know, as soon as possible, really. Because I, I can always download the stuff while we're, you know, during team week and that. So. Yeah. So, you know, the, the deadline is a factor of the available network connection speed. Cool. Um, any other updates or should we talk about uh, Bernard's uh, IPNS problem? Cool. Bernard, over to you. Tell us what you're doing and what's not working, how you expect it to work. Uh, so currently <coughs> I fetch the latest uh, rolling release updates of OpenSUSE. That's called OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, and it adds like two to five, four gigabytes per day. Uh, but I always do a full snapshot. So I get a new CID, <coughs> and then I add the CID to the old tree. There's some object, IPFS object add patch, patch? Uh, some patch thing. So I have this coded, and it adds the patch. And then I have a new CID with all the old data in the history tree and the current one replaced with the current uh, data. And that's uh, very useful. So I have all the old data in there, but also the current one in a constant place. And then I publish updates, uh, but I try to publish it over IPNS. And every time I resolve it over IPNS, it takes 60 seconds. And then it's cached for a minute, and then it takes again 60 seconds. It's, it's not something you can use. Very well, so I went with uh, some Dune DNS. We just put an IPFS CD uh, in there every day. That's working reasonably well. But then I noticed that <coughs> it's, uh, the IPFS process is growing and growing. Every time I add data, it's growing. And it had this morning 8,000 connections. That's so uh, very strange because I said it should only have a few hundred. Uh, so something with the connection manager is also not working there. Do you know how many peers yeah, so it has at that point? Uh, what peers? Do you know how many peers it has? When it has like 8,000 connections, like how long is the, the, um, the peer? Uh, no, 8,000 peers. Uh, uh, so I said IPFS starts bit swap, uh, and the bit swap said uh, there are 8,000 uh, peers. And that's strange because the config says it should be between 600 and 900, which is the default. So, so something was strange there, but version, also the memory. What used. version of, I assume you're using Go IPFS. Do you know what version you're using? Uh, the dot 20, so the latest stable. Um, 21 is the, the latest stable. Oh. And I actually, that, that if it maybe. doesn't mess yourself up, I recommend updating because 20 had a bug where, um, it was, it just kept sending out connection requests and not getting responses back. And so um, did a did a fast release to kind of get them all as fast as, we, as okay. uh, things like that. Yeah, I thought I checked some days ago and then 20 was the latest, but yeah, I can update. That's a good hint. On the, um, on the 60 second IPNS resolu name resolution thing, um, that's because the uh, daemon like it, it waits to get a number of confirmations. So it, it makes a bunch of requests for the latest um, hash of, of a given IPNS name and compares them. And if you know to make sure that it's got the latest one. And every now and again, it'll hit a it'll make a request as to a, a peer that's behind a NAT, and it will time out. And that's why it always takes that sixty seconds. It's something the IPNS guys are aware of, and they're working on, and they're going to make it faster. Uh, so it picks a random peer? So it, confirm or? Uh, it, I don't think it's random. I think it, there is an algorithm that it uses. I'm not 100% sure on what that is. Um, but it, try, it, basically it makes a bunch of connections to verify that it's got the latest version of, of the IPNS name, like the, 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 the CID that it was going to. 
And if one of those is behind a nap, which a lot of them are, then it times out, which is why it takes 60 seconds. Okay. Okay. So yeah, is it time. something <laughs> that could be addressed, I guess, in different ways, like having a shorter time out or mm -hmm. choosing 10 different ones and those ones get ignored? Yeah, exactly. They're, I mean, they're, they're trying a bunch of different stuff. Um, they're looking into using DNS and they're doing uh, IPNS resolution, which will be a lot faster. Uh, like, then you, you kind of rely on centralized infrastructure a little bit, um, but the kind of usability trade-off is definitely worth it, so it's going to get better. Something that I've heard other people doing, I'm not sure how much we recommend this, but if you reduce the number of years you need to get a confirmation from, from 20, which is relatively high, to something more like eight or four or something like that, um, you're just, you're doing fewer round trips, you're more likely to get responses from peers um, without uh, having to like wait for your timeout. Uh, so there's a config option for that? Or, uh, I what's it? believe so, but I haven't actually tried twiddling myself. I just know that other people have, have um, made that choice to have IPNS look for fewer peers. Okay, kids playing with my hardware. <laughs> um, yeah. You also, I mean, I think we'd be really interested to know, like, kind of what, what got you excited about um, putting OpenSUSE on IPFS and kind of your, your top level goals. Like, what, what is most appealing about that to you? Um, because we're, we're trying to make sure that, you know, more people have that opportunity and that it's a great experience for everyone. So the more background and info you can give us on that, the more we can hopefully help. Yeah, so I like this concept, uh, the integrated uh, uh, deduplication, uh, because uh, there's a snapshot and every snapshot has a lot of the same data as a previous snapshot. So I think one snapshot is 90 gigabyte total, but there's only two to four gigabyte new data in there. So I can keep a history without uh, adding 90 gigabyte each day, uh, but only adding a few gigabyte each day and then uh, I'm doing it for the reproducible builds uh, thing. So whenever I want to reproduce a binary, I need the old binaries that were used, like the old compiler and the old uh, other tool chains. And uh, normally these are not around anymore, and then you can't reproduce uh, artifacts anymore. But uh, now I have this history and I can pick uh, the items. And I have a small database file where I say, okay, if it's uh, using this version, then it's this IPFS CID, and then I can just pick the CID and then link it into my dependencies and use it uh, during build. And that's really nice, nice feed. And at the same time, I can use it to update my laptop at home uh, because uh, I fetch it once and then I can update the same lap uh, the next laptop uh, next to it uh, without fetching all the data from the internet again. So this automatic mirroring, that's really a nice feature. That's what I liked uh, with BitTorrent, but BitTorrent is really not suited to this use case. So that's the main use cases uh, on my side. Uh, maybe yeah, I used to have a squid, uh, but the squid uh, had this problem that we have a download redirector on our OpenSUSE download server and the redirector sometimes points this way and sometimes points another way and squid uh, doesn't notice that it's actually the same file on these different mirrors. So it uh, keeps downloading duplicates and then I started pointing to one specific mirror and only use that one, but then sometimes that one was outdated or had an inconsistent copy. So some files were from the new repo and some were old, and then it was messing, messing things up. And yeah, so it was not, not perfect. And sometimes even files got replaced. So normally a lot of software assumes that files are not replaced. So if you do a new build, you get a new build number. But sometimes there were renames and the renames caused the build numbers to go down again and then we had the same files with the same names again and the mirrors wouldn't zoom them because they already had this file. And so 
all these problems you don't get when you have snapshots with really uh, hash cryptographic hash consistency. And that's that's really nice. Thing. Whereabouts are you storing your history of all of your snapshots? Uh, so the snapshots that I could get. Uh, if you want to see, it's openzuse.zq1.de. And there's a DNS link uh, entry under uh, a separate DNS. So you can point the C name to some, what was it, uh, Cloudflare IPSS, I think, but that's not working too well, I found. So I, the IPFS IO one is working better sometimes. Not sure why. Both of the gateways have been a little bit on fire for the 4.20 release. And so we're fingers crossed that things are, are getting better. But I've um, been noticing problems. You're not the only one. OK. I hope I wasn't the cause. So I, I saw some, what was it, 180 terabyte, no, gigabyte, gigabyte, 180 gigabytes passing by my server in a few days. And that's not too little. So my server can handle it, but uh, if if the gateways pass it through, uh, so if people really go through the gateways over HTTP and the gateways switch it from my server, then it's it could put some load on the gateways. Not sure if there are public stats uh, for these for the gateways. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I can try deploy the uh, 21 release and then see if things get better and what's left on issues. I put some um, notes in the chat for uh, the parameters that you use to tune your um, IPNS name lookup. Okay. Let's check what's there. And yeah, so if you're getting about a, a, you said a gigabyte passing through your node in a day, um, I think the gateway in general um, is is serving something, something between like 10 and 25 gigabytes, or sorry, terabits per day. So um, there's a lot, there's a lot of other traffic. So don't worry, you're, that, that would not be overloading at all. Okay, so I won't break it. That's good to hear. Okay, so there are options to IPN, IPFS name resolve, but that's not what you're using. But when you're going through the gateway, you go through localhost 8080 slash IPNS, and that doesn't have this option, of course. So is there maybe a config option? Oops. If you, yeah, if you, if you, um using the HTTP API, then you'll, you can pass the parameter. Ah, so with question marks or? Yeah, or does it no, work in I just API? dig out the documentation for you. Never did that. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, uh, as you can see, I'm still pretty new to the <laughs> IPFS. All of the things you listed of like, you know, this is why I'm doing it, this stuff I want to get out is like one right on on our expectation of like some cool stuff. And it's super exciting to us that like you're you're picking it up and running with it. So thank you so much also for for coming in and chatting with us about it. We're we're learning stuff by talking to you and excited to get to help. And it goes without saying, but please come back and, and chat any time. What was the last part? Just that you're welcome. Welcome to come back at any time, and you know any other questions yeah. or, or just to chat. You know where to find us every week. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, I will try to join uh, as often as I can. It's not always possible because yeah, family obligations. <laughs> okay. Yeah, any questions? Uh, yeah, someone wrote four terabytes, but it's actually only a few hundred gigabytes of data uh, because of the deduplication that's currently stored on my server. And uh, oh, the next thing uh, where I haven't found any definite things yet is uh, 
once it grows too much for this one server. So can I put it on some offline machine? So I put the history on some offline machine or some not, not so well connected machine because mostly the current data will be used, but then I have to unpin all the data on the server and that's uh, might be a bit tricky. So this, how do we manage pins uh, correctly? <laughs> um, IPFS cluster basically lets you manage pen sets across multiple machines. Yeah, currently it's only one machine. So I have a lot of pins on one machine and like every day I add a new pin for the new snapshot. Rec recursive pin over these 90. Can you give you set up IPFS cluster and say so you add a new machine, then it will start doing the, the balancing across multiple machines and IPFS cluster kind of lets you have a suite of IPFS nodes that are pinning content across different places. Um, and so if you start pinning things to cluster, it'll be like, oh, well, it already has the stuff pinned on this machine, but maybe I want, you know, X, X factor of uh, replication. So I'll like, Started across other places as well. Um, and when you get new stuff, it'll be like, this one has space. I will pin it here instead of in the other place. Um, so it, it has like, for sharding stuff, it, ha it has most of the, the functionality that you probably want. Oh, sounds good. But I don't know if it necessarily helps. Like, migrating to cluster means that you, you're going to have to like do that configuration. Um, versus, and you, you're mentioning that you're kind of already in a place where you're manually pinning all of these um, these historical snapshots, right? Yeah, I have a script doing it. So there's a cron daily, and the cron daily pins it for me. So it's not really manually, but uh, because of the resource leaks, I have to go in manually and do a kill all IPFS uh, once in a while and get it restarted. I think there's also not, not a restart command, right? Not a config reload. Because sometimes I change the config and the advice is uh, you need to restart the daemon, but there's no restart command and no config reload command. That's also something I was wondering because many, many classic Unix demons have this send a cop. And if you send a cop, it will read the config again and use a new config values instead of the old ones. That sounds like a good uh, suggestion to make to the Go IPFS repo. Yeah. Open an issue, you say? That would yeah. be great. OK, you can do that. Yeah, I know that IPFS desktop, which is my way of always running my own node, um, that definitely has a restart, you know, but that's not um, through, the, through the API. Cool. We are we are at time. Um, bye, Andrew. Uh, do you want to talk further? Or? I I actually have to jump off to another meeting. Thanks for letting us know. But thank you also so much for coming. It was great to chat with you. Yes. Thank you very much, Ben. If you want to come back and have a chat about more problems, uh, just if you have, just turn up or ping us in advance, and we'll try and get people who implemented the thing that you're having the problem with on the call. Uh, and they can definitely help you out. Oh, thanks. So, see you possibly another week. Cool. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much.